Hello and welcome to Bloomberg TV and they are part of the world's biggest financial news network. This is the big story on Vivek Law on Monday. The Central Electricity Regulatory Commission or CERC ruled that Tata Power's Mundra Power plant was eligible to receive a compensatory tariff to mitigate the rising cost of imported coal. But is the initial euphoria from the Adani and Tata orders backed by follow through in the process that now needs to get underway? Joining us to talk about that is Amit Kapoor who has represented all three UMPPs, Adani, Tata's and has just returned from a hearing on Reliance Power as well. At the outset, congratulations, Amit, uh, for those two big wins, and you've just had your petition uh, accepted today as well at the CRC. Uh, a good time to talk to you about the larger issues, and I want to rep you know, refer first, before I get into these specifics, to the note that you've written, and on the last point, you make the point that the decision shows the way forward to the big issue of stranded asset in diverse infrastructure sectors in India with around 7,50,000 crore rupees of bank financing stuck, 10,50,000 crore of sunk cost, and 30,000 megawatt of power capacity stranded due to coal and gas supply issues costing between 1.25 lakh to 1.5 lakh crore rupees. Sorry for this quotation of yours which you've written but tell me what are the implications, the larger implications of both these two orders. Uh, Vivek, the big issue is that uh, it's time that we focused as an economy on the fundamentals of our growth. We are not going to go back to the 8-9% growth rate unless we get the infrastructure bottleneck solved. To get that, you need investments. The 12th plan wants a trillion dollars, out of which 48% needs to come from private sector. If you're going to have banking sector under distress, and you will have the investments going fallow on existing projects because of lack of material. I don't see any reason why we should create more capacity. So the big question is, where 750,000 crores have been invested by banks as a part of the project financing, and those are under distress, how should you revive them? How should you make sure that the money is utilized effectively for the country? And how do we get back onto the growth path? And I think this judgment, twice over, Recognizing the problems of the sector and the economy has tried to balance the two, determined that there is a need for compensation, but ask parties to put their heads together to solve it. So it's a step forward, but we still have to see how it goes. Both these two orders, uh, Amit, have been fairly reasoned and articulated orders running into more than a hundred pages. What is the likelihood of orders of this kind getting challenged? Uh, personally, I don't see how this should get challenged at this stage because uh, after giving the preliminary finding that there is a need to compensate, they have still asked the parties to sit together with the intervention of two reputed people, a reputed banker, a reputed financial analyst to try and find a solution. So I would be hoping that where the government entities and bodies were concerned about whether we should move forward to discuss at all, they have been given guidance by the commission. Moving forward from there, if parties are troubled by it and the solution doesn't match up to their expectations, surely there is a chance that people will challenge. But I am hoping that the genius of all parties, whether it's lenders, it is promoters, it's procurers, it's consumers, is brought together to understand that we are facing a serious crisis. And larger interests of the nation would be put first ahead of ourselves individually to try and achieve a solution, but still to see how it goes. Mm. While, while the stock markets have reacted extremely favorably to these verdicts, I'm going to ask you a few questions of concerns that global leading brokerages are voicing. While they've all welcomed and they've used the word favorable on this order, their concerns largely pertain, uh, Amit, to the point of we don't believe that the matter is fully settled yet, likely possibilities they may challenge the order, concern on the quantum of relief and possibility of further litigation and finally concerns that the tariff hike mechanism which is proposed is a temporary mechanism. Do you think that these fears, uh, would you like to allay these fears in terms of uh, the way you see things? Uh, let's take the last one first. Uh, the fact of the matter is that all petitions have been filed to deal with a specific issue and we are talking of Tata and Adani right now, which was the problem of fuel supply and the cost of imported coal. Given that that problem is temporary in nature, and given that the price indexation will change month to month, the solution cannot be permanent. It has to be specific to the problem. 
So I don't think there is any reason to get worried about the fact. I hope that there will be a formula and the formula will be tied to the price impact of the international prices and that should resolve the matter. If the prices dip, the consumer must get the benefit. Nobody can expect to make a windfall profit in these circumstances. Moving from there to the other issues, there is a legal system. CRC is the first leg of it. If the decision is to be challenged, parties will go and challenge. But we should be assured of the fact that the Electricity Act brought in form a process where matters up to Supreme Court are getting resolved in maximum of four to five years. Maximum, and most of them are getting resolved in three years. First issue, whether the CRC's mod, uh, model of getting a committee to resolve the matters will find a solution where nobody challenges, we still have to see what happens. <coughs> All I would say is that there are enough safeguards built for safeguarding the consumer interest and it's a balanced order. There are issues like if there is profit made on the coal supplied to the power plant by a group company, that profit must be brought back into the system so that the burden on the consumer doesn't result in double dip profits to any generator. Good idea. The fact that you have a target availability or an assured offtake of 80 or 85 percent, if you produce more, that should be sold in the market. The profit made should be brought back to mitigate the loss on the consumer. Excellent idea. The other suggestion that try and see other methods of trying to resolve the issue, including using lower gross calorific value coal so that the cost of coal is lower without unnecessary capital cost. All three are positive measures where CRC has taken a leap out of the petition of Tata's themselves and Adani in the hearing that we don't want to make any windfall profits. We only want to restoration of the unforeseen, uncontrollable burden which is going to render the whole project futile. So I think we still need to walk a fine line to understand where we are. They are right in saying it's still dough in the oven. We need to see what comes out. But we should hold our horses because it's only 30 days. So perhaps by 15th May we'll know what the shape of things are. How has your experience been with the appellate authority? I mean, we do know, for example, that certain appellate authorities move really fast even when a challenge comes to them. A classic case being a, the Securities Appellate Tribunal. It's a very young uh, appellate authority, this particular one, uh, where in, if at all uh, the appeal goes, it will go there. What has your experience been in terms of the speed with which it has passed its verdict summit? Perhaps not well known in public, but by, uh, in my experience, the appellate tribunal for electricity has a track record which is unmatched globally, not just in India. The statute says that appeal must go in 45 days and it must be decided in 180 days. Since 2005, September, that they started functioning, their disposal rate has been at the level of 90% of all filings within the 180 days. Wow. The intervention by Supreme Court in the matters that have traveled up out of all these disposals has been hardly 5-7%. to 7%. So, I believe that a matter of this nature coming to the tribunal would get resolved within 6 months to a year of its filing and that should give us the finality because Supreme Court does not normally interfere in matters of this nature where findings are within the ballpark of reasonable and prudent decisions. That's a very important uh, point of statistic that you've just shared with us and hopefully a lot of the brokerages who are expressing concern on a delay will probably take heart from that. You've just come from another case that uh, you know, has been uh, admitted before the CRC, Amit, pertaining to reliance power. I understand that's a very different issue compared to these two. First of all, on these two, are there other UMPPs like Tata and Adani, which could now post these two orders coming, actually hope for similar such orders in the similar situation? I think that's the principle of law in India. Uh, it's common law, so it's not uh, the feeling of the morning that uh, judge decides. Once CRC has taken a position, it is to be expected that if any other entity comes before the same court, they are going to be dealt with in the same manner so long as you satisfy the thresholds that have been set out in the two orders, which are reasonably high. The issue is not just CRC. In fact, I am uh, focusing your attention to the larger issue of the whole infrastructure sector, the trillion dollar story. We all know that there are highway projects that have been cancelled or are looking at rebid. Now, this lends a serious thought in a very detailed assessment of the underlying economics and finance to be considered by the regulator and the governments in solving. Uh, we will not forget that NTP 94 when telecom licensing was done on the basis of maximum royalty, had moved to NTP 99 on revenue share. And that led to a huge spurt in density and growth in India. 
similar decisions at the policy and regulatory level are needed divorcing the ownership from the asset we must focus on the infrastructure facility or the asset created we must understand that the debate is between what burden must a taxpayer bear in terms of his money involved through banking channels versus what kind of burden must be taken by the rate payer or the consumer of that particular commodity and the balance has to be struck if a stakeholder like a generator or a distribution company or any other stakeholder like a concession owner must absorb some of the burden for transition so be it but a national evaluation and consensus on solving matters of this nature is of great urgency you you didn't answer my question how many more players do you think or projects do you think could be going up to crc on the basis of adani and uh, the tata power verdicts and secondly what is the entire sasan uh, petition that you just got an admitted what is that all about amit sasan there were three petitions uh, there is the first petition is about uh, change in law impact for the construction period uh the procurers had a meeting they agreed that the claim is legitimate under the change of law clause of the ppa they had a dispute about how much compensation must be given that was admitted second petition was in the construction period impact of devaluation of rupee and force majeure conditions a dispute lies admitted the third petition is for the operation period impact of change in law that has also been admitted now these are various heads of uh, claims this is not about imported coal sasan as you know is a domestic coal project but the claims are under article 12 and 13 of the ppa that's force majeure and change in law under article 17 that's dispute resolution and section 79 which was used also in the uh, adani and the tata power case so that's as far as sasan is concerned how many more umpps well let's face it as umpps go there are only four ultra mega power projects in the country krishna patnam sasan and uh, mundra are already before the crc the fourth one kalaya didn't take off yet the others are yet in the mill but there are other projects of civil and nature which are uh, in the public sector and private sector where capacities of 2000 3000 4000 megawatts are there those facing trouble are likely to come anybody who is facing distress will have to meet the threshold or the touchstone that is laid out it's very difficult for me to tell you that out of the 30000 megawatts stranded on coal and gas which one will come which won't that's up to the parties and their financial situations but surely some more make up well given your track record i'm sure you're going to be representing most of them thank you very much amit kapoor for joining us and sharing your perspective on all these important developments as far as the power sector is concerned thanks very much wish you all the best All right that's all the time we have for you in this edition of the big story keep watching Bloomberg TV India lots more coming up after this